lecture, we're going to apply our setting terms to trauma, in particular, Susan Glassbell's trifles. In terms of the general setting, we know that this text was written in the early 20th century. It's set in rural, rural America. Now, in a play, we also have um, many times a, uh, st a set of stage directions at the beginning that also announce and give us some details about the general setting. So if you take a look at the first page of this play, which is page 1197, see that there's a block of opening stage directions that sets the scene. The kitchen in a now abandoned farmhouse of John Wright, a gloomy kitchen, and left without having been put in order. Unwashed pans under the sink, a loaf of bread outside the bread box, a dish towel on the table, other signs of incompleted work. At the rear outer door opens, the sheriff comes in, followed by the county attorney and Hale. And then we get some descriptions of the different characters. So notice the first thing that happens there is that the general scene is established. In a play, we often can look to the stage directions to give us a sense of both the general, in the case of this at the beginning of the play, and throughout the play, the particular elements of physical setting for sure, and even some clues about temporal setting. This play is also a really good example of the classical unities, the unity of time and unity of place. So let me talk about those terms for a minute, and then we'll see how they function in this play. So unity of time simply means that the play takes place in one coherent chronological chunk of time. These are called classical unities because the conventions come from ancient uh, Greek and Roman dramas that adhered to these uh, unities pretty customarily. And typically when you're talking about the unity of time, it means that the action or play takes place in no more than a single day from sunrise to sunset. This play, uh, the time frame is even shorter than that. It's really, we're seeing really pretty much in real time um, the process of the search for evidence in the rights, on the Wright's farm. And so it really is just about the space of the play, which may be about a half an hour or so that this play takes place. So certainly it conforms to that unity of time. And that would be, again, an element of temporal setting. In, for this drama, we have an even more specific term for it. Now, that's not true of all dramas, of course, but in this one, it definitely holds. Unity of place, as you may have guessed already, is that the uh, action of the, of the play takes place all in a single setting. And in this case, that's definitely true with that single setting being this kitchen in the farmhouse. And obviously, notably, we have, we have a kitchen that is out of order, unwashed pans, uh, dish towel on the table, signs of incompleted work, as it says in that stage direction at the beginning. And clearly that's significant. That, that idea of Mrs. Wright being a poor housekeeper, as one of the men remarks on, becomes a point of contention between him and Mrs. Hale, who, you know, talks about uh, how would I like to be judged by my work being half finished. There's clearly a connection being drawn here between the state of the kitchen and the character of the woman who's supposed to keep that kitchen in order. So that's a really interesting correlation between setting and character in this case and the different points of view among the different characters about that state of incompleteness in the kitchen also becomes a source of conflict among characters that are on stage as well as being a way to judge Mrs. Wright, a character who is off stage. When we're looking for details of setting in a drama, whether that's the general setting, temporal or physical, the stage directions can be really helpful for us. And when we wanna think about those elements as analytical elements, we might think through how those details of setting, whether temporal or physical, are related to other elements such as character.